lenses are just as important as cameras. Different lenses will give you different results. They have different focal lengths, and this means they show different fields of view. The lower the mm or millimeter number on a lens, the wider its field of view. Lenses are either primes, meaning fixed lenses which give just one viewpoint, or zooms which can change and give a range of viewpoints. If the lens has one millimeter number, then it just has one focal length and therefore it is a prime lens. And if it has two numbers with a dash, then it has a range of focal lengths and so it is a zoom lens. Zooms have more flexibility and are cheaper, but primes tend to give better quality and they just do one job well instead of trying to do everything. So most professional films and TV shows are filmed with primes and not zooms and different lenses will simply be chosen for different scenes. So why do filmmakers use different lenses? Well, it's because you can use them to help creatively tell your story with how you want your audience to feel. A wide lens will feel very different to a tight lens. Wide lenses like a 16mm expand the space around you and show more of a scene. They might be used for establishing shots or to add context to where a scene is taking place. Wide lenses will distort a person's face if you put them near the camera. Now, often this works for comedy or a quirky situation or to help maybe put the audience in the head of the character. Tighter lenses, also known as longer lenses, will flatten out the space and make your subject look like they are closer to whatever is behind them. A very long lens, which is called a telephoto lens, can be used to maybe add the feeling that someone is being watched because it's a bit similar to what you might see through binoculars or a telescope. But for a conventional scene, if you want close-ups of faces to look more flattering and more normal, then it's better to stick within the range of about 70 to 100 millimeters. And this will remove all that distortion and it will give you a more normal looking shot of a face. But remember, you don't need lots of lenses to make a film. You can tell a great story with just one lens, whether it's a prime or a zoom. And in fact, quite a few famous films have actually done this. If you can only choose one lens to make a whole film on, then I would choose nothing that is too wide or too tight. I would probably choose something in the middle, like maybe a 35 or 40 or 50 millimeter lens if it was a prime. And if it was a zoom, I would probably pick a 24 to 70. The 50 millimeter lens is a very popular choice because it's said to most closely resemble the perspective of what the human eye sees. Now, I don't know if that's true. You can make your own decision, but that is one reason why the 50 is a popular lens to use. Also, do note that the same lens's field of view may look different on different cameras, depending on the sensor size of the camera. If you're using a camera with a full-frame sensor, which are usually the best quality and the most expensive cameras, then you'll see the true focal length of the lens. If you're using anything other than a full-frame sensor, it will be a cropped sensor camera, such as APS-C or Micro Four Thirds sensors, which are some common types. Most cheaper DSLRs will have cropped sensors, meaning that you will see a more cropped result through the same lens. So if you want to shoot very wide shots on a cropped sensor camera, you might need to buy a special wide lens designed for cropped sensor cameras. So if you care a lot about focal length, then always check what sensor size your intended camera has. But if you don't, then don't worry about it and just use whatever you have. Different lenses also have different apertures they can reach. The lower the number, the less light it needs, and the better the lens and the more shallow depth of field it will give. So a lens with f1.4 written on it will give you a blurrier background to a subject than a lens with f4 written on it, but it probably will also be more expensive. If the lens has two F numbers on it with a dash in the middle, it means that the light actually gets reduced as the lens zooms in closer. Now it's quite common for a kit lens, meaning the lens that you would probably buy together with a camera body to have these two numbers like this. But if you can, I would avoid these lenses because especially in low light situations, you'll need a lot of light to use them anyway. And if you zoom in, you will need even more. And as you zoom in, you will see the shot getting darker. So I would avoid them if possible. Now we have another feature which will also be determined by what lens you are using, and that is focus. On many cameras, you can either switch this to manual, where you turn the focus on the lens for what you want, 
or you can switch it to auto and depending on your camera, you might be able to use this auto function with your lens. Now, almost all professional films are shot with manual focus and they have a dedicated camera assistant who adjusts the focus themselves. But if you're shooting solo, you'll probably need to just do this manual focus adjusting yourself, or you can maybe try and get a good result with using autofocus, especially if your camera has any facial recognition technology, because this is good for keeping the actor always in focus. So this one is up to you, depending on your kit and what you are using. Now, if you're buying your own kit and want to know whether to get a cheaper camera or a cheaper lens, I would go for a cheaper camera and spend more money on a lens rather than an expensive camera with a cheap lens because the results will look better. So work out what lenses you can use with your camera and get experimenting.